Hi, welcome to the 6502 show. In this special 6800 edition, we're going to talk about Pilot, specifically Tiny Pilot. I've ported it over from the 6502 to the 6800, and it still works great. <laughs> Pilot's been around a long time, since the, oh what, 1969 I believe, and was in heavy use in the 70s and 80s in computer-aided instruction in all kinds of educational settings from grade schools all the way through university. It's an amazing dialogue engine. That's its strength. But Pilot has a few surprises up its sleeve. Let's take a look at this little language which weighs in at just over a kilobyte and a half and what it can do. This is Dr. John Starkweather. He was a professor of psychology at the University of California, San Francisco, and he developed Pilot in 1968 to help students write computer-aided instructional materials. He had regular students in mind, uh, teachers and medical students. Not these guys. Uh, that is an SDS 940, by the way, and that's the type of machine that Dr. Starkweather wrote Pilot on back in the day. Well, let's fast forward. It's 1979, and in this issue of Micro Magazine, Tiny Pilot by Nick Virtus appeared, complete with the full listing and explanation of how the program internals all worked. Before I demo Tiny Pilot, put it through a few paces, let's take a quick look at some of the commands. First, uh, in the editor section, you can... Uh, you know, do most of the things you would normally do. You can uh, erase RAM, you can execute a program, you can move around in the editor, you can make a listing, you can leave the uh, tiny pilot, it's a little exit thing, and go back to your monitor. You got a backspace to correct stuff. But one thing of note, none of those characters can be in a type or a REM statement. So um, don't put them in there. And here are the statements that we have available. We can do some input here. Uh, we can compute something. We can do some addition, subtraction, and compare. Um, we can exit out of a subroutine. So that's just return, essentially. Input a variable. And we can jump, which is go to, essentially. Leap, which is calling a machine language uh, program. Here we've got our main match statement. That's a big deal. And uh, we can make a tiny pseudo random number. And if somebody can come up with a better random number generator than I could come up with, that's what I got. Uh, which is, you know, considering this isn't a number cruncher, this is a dialogue engine, it's more than adequate for a lot of simple games. You can make a remark. You can um, stop the program. And it is imperative, though, that the program ends with a stop. Unlike, say, Microsoft Basic, you can't just let the thing tail off into Nowheresville. Uh, VTL2 will just stop executing when it hits junk. Tiny Pilot will crash. Uh, you got some subroutine usage. This is probably the most interesting one here. This is a transfer string command, and this allows you to rotate your, your two strings around so you can stash one in the string area. You can move it into the name area, which also moves it into the um, characters area. And that you can match against. So uh, you do get a chance to uh, compare strings and do some things like that. Let's take a look at a classic game from the 70s right out of David All's Basic Computer Games book, 1978. The second one, the first one, of course, was 101 Computer Games. Uh, this is Chemist, and it's got some very simple math in it, really, where you're going to uh, try to discover the ratio here of uh, water to an acid to dilute it. We need to get a random number. We need to do a little multiplication and division, an absolute value, and uh, then a comparison. Real simple stuff. Well, you can do all of this in Tiny Pilot if you want to. 
Um, here, we'll uh, first get a random number, add 10 to it, and divide by 2. Our tiny pilot random number generator only goes up to 85, so we'll add a bit, and uh, then we'll get a number that is usable for the program. This right here is our division routine. We're just going to keep subtracting 2 and keep track of how many times we subtract 2 until the number goes negative. And then the number that is in I will be A divided by 2. Multiplying by 7 times is, well, pretty obvious. And uh, we'll divide by 3 here to get W. And then we'll have this equation taken care of. Absolute value is not too difficult either because all we got to do again is do some easy subtraction and we'll compare. And if it went negative, 998, nine, whatever, um, we'll know that, uh, gee, that's not gonna, that's going to be a negative number. We don't want that. We want a positive number. So all I'm going to do is just switch around the two variables and get my value that way. Here is a comparison to uh, see if we're within the 5% that we had over here to determine if we did a good job or not. We'll divide by 20 to get um, a number F, how many times it went into 20, and that will be our acceptable range for 5%. Here, we're going to compare F and D. D was our... Um, absolute value that we got for uh, our guess right there versus what the actual uh, amount of water should be. So we'll compare that and we'll just see if it's less than. And by the way we'll do that is we'll uh, make I equal F and that's our counter. And we'll just keep dropping that until we hit zero. Well, if we, if we match it, and it does match, then we're good. So we'll jump to G and we get our good job. And that, because that means it was certainly less than F. But if we hit, uh, we go past zero and we roll into negative, that means that D was bigger than F, it's outside the acceptable range, then we will not jump back up to label S. Instead, it's yes, we will jump down to label Z. And label Z is the desalination so and you get to try again with another life just like in uh, the other program and uh, it's essentially exactly the same here's a run all right tiny pilots up and running let's clear out anything that might have been hanging out in there in that ram and we will load in our program with a simple serial upload from my terminal emulator Know some games. And we go down to Tiny Pilot, and there's Chemist. Dooly -doo, 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 doo And we wait for a few moments while the 1.7k of code loads in. That is uh, about 700 bytes bigger than the basic version, as you could see from the previous screenshots. And we're ready to go. All we got to do is execute. So you get to read that while Tiny Pilot's trying to figure out all that math that we thought about because it's doing it all with loops, just addition and subtraction. So I added a little thing to eh, pass the time or at least let you know that it was trying to do something. Okay. It's determined that we've been given 32 liters of cryptocyanic acid. How much water will I add? Well, I got to go seven to three. So if I was going to just put this off the top of my head, I'm going to go, okay, a third of 32 is about 11. So times seven is 77, but that's a little less. So I'm going to say I will use 74 liters of water. It runs its check. Hey, I did a good job. I'll try again with a different batch of acid. And this time we'll, uh, we'll purposely mess up the result. 
but it would be quite easy. You know, you got a you got a little kid learning some math. It's so easy to alter this program or perhaps change the ratios with another random number you could add and have it be a little different every time once this got to be old hat. All right, 31 liters. Well, it's going to be roughly the same result, but we'll we'll do something wildly inappropriate and say 99 liters. Oh no, desalinated into a blob of quivering protoplasm. But you get another life. And it'll it'll run through until uh, you use up your three lives. Okay, we'll move on from here. Of course, where Tiny Pilot really excels is as a dialogue engine, as a conversational tool to help you learn something or guide you one way or another. Uh, in terms of a learning experience or enjoying a story. Here is an old standby. It is Eliza, modified to work with Tiny Pilot, and you can just uh, tell it whatever you want to tell it. It's there to listen. How am I today? I'm, I'm okay. I feel good. Well, tell me about my problems. Um... You have up to 40 characters to input here, so that looks like it's, well, less than half the screen width. Tell me more about that. Well, see, how do I feel about that? Well, I could tell it how I feel about Flexor. Maybe I want to uh, upgrade and get a 6809 or uh, something of that nature, 6303. Anyway, I could talk to Eliza all day, but we're not going to. This next one is uh, kind of a choose-your-own-adventure story. You guys remember those back from the 70s and 80s? I think they were even still being made in the 90s, where you would read along and you would have uh, to make decisions about what you were going to do at any stage in the story, and you were part of the story. Uh, here, I've written one, called Madison's Dilemma. And uh, it's a story of uh, a young woman who gets pushed out of a bus and hits her head. And uh, so you get to make choices. Do you curse the impatient moron who pushed you out of the door of the bus? Do you grab your head and dramatize your grievous wound? Well, I know what my first inclination would be. And so you're led down a different path. Uh, this particular one, your iPhone doesn't work. You know, uh, you ask if you could use hers. She points to an old coin-op payphone. What do you do? Um, well, how do you text mom on that thing? The waitress loses her patience, throws you out of the cafe. You wonder if her day is begging until you die of starvation. So maybe next time you play, you might want to ask for a quarter. Everything you've seen here in the video, including source code, object code, games, scripts, and much more. It's all available on my website, link in the description below. Also, it's flashing up right there. So, do get the stuff, enjoy it. I also have the original 6502 version from Nick Virtus that was typed in a couple years ago, and we've had a blast with that too. So, check that out as well. All right. Thanks for viewing. Hope you liked the video. If you did, do hit the like button and you can subscribe if you want to keep up to date on other things that, as they come up. And uh, I'll see y'all next time. You take care.